What's it mean to get Marcus back? Um, it's big. Yeah, Marcus is definitely uh, one of the better guys we have in the back end. Um, he's he, he not only has the talent, he has the the speed, he has the athleticism, he's, he's got all of that. But he heightens everybody just with his awareness and his communication skills. And um, although the it's first year in a system for him for this particular system, there's a lot of carryover stuff that he's done. So uh, the veteran presence is just uh, it'll be big for us back there. On the flip side. It- if CJ is unavailable, how much of a challenge is that for you guys? Um, you, you know, we're fortunate that, that we have some depth at the position. We've had some guys that have played a lot of football in the early, especially in their careers. Um, Jamie, and he's he's an unusual rookie because, you know, rookies, um, they're so known for not necessarily having the awareness, the ability to communicate, all those things, whereas Jamie is not that at all. Like, he carries himself like a vet. He communicates like a vet. Um, although he doesn't have the experience that a CJ has, and <clears throat> he's a, he's a guy that we have a lot of trust in. So if CJ can't go, um, Jamie will be our guy. When you um, did the self scouting over the bye week, are there any one or two areas that you're emphasizing now coming back that you, you want improvement in? Um, it, we found an inch in probably every area of the game, whether it be the run game, short yardage, pass game, first, second down, third down, the whole thing. Um, we found some inches, I think, everywhere. And uh, um, we've been really, like, specific in the way we've practiced this week and the way we attacked the bye week as far as finding those inches and attacking some of the deficiencies that showed up. Um, and I'm excited to see what we can do this Sunday. What, what improvements have you seen from Mac Jones versus from week two versus to um, now going into this matchup? Uh, it feels as though that they've opened up the playbook a little bit more for him. You know, the first time around it was screen, it was run, it was quick game, it was play pass. Um, all that still exists for sure, but now there's a little bit more drop back than you saw in the first game, I thought. Uh, so it's just they're opening up the playbook. It's more and more of the, um, the Tom Brady tight plays that he was very comfortable with, the historic Patriot plays that they've always had. So uh, um, definitely more being put on his plate. And you're seeing him respond, too. For him to, um, to help be part of 29 points against that Dallas defense is, uh, I thought that was, I mean, I think they're, they're a good defense in, in every level of their defense. And uh, for them to do that is, uh, is a reflection of where he is ascending as a player. The, um they were one of the teams that was a bit more active in free agency, and the, the two tight ends that they signed, right. Jamu and, and Henry, were um, obviously two of the bigger additions. I know Henry's gotten the end zone a little bit more the last couple of weeks, but they really right. haven't had the production, I think, that a lot of people expected. Do you know why, like, from what you've seen on the film? I, I think it's just indicative of the Patriots, just in general. You know, they are a team that historically finishes stronger than they start. You know, they find a way – to kind of adapt to their personnel and to the to the particular team they have that year. And it's so unique from year to year to year, just, you know, just playing against them and coaching against them. It's just, uh, you know, they, they really search for ways to utilize the personnel they have rather than just a cookie cutter playbook. So I think you're starting to see they're finding ways to use Johnu. They're finding ways to use Hunter Henry. They're finding ways to use all these receivers that they have, trying to find what each guy does and does well. Um, and I think they'll continue to get better as they, as they go, as they always have. Speaking of tight ends, I know the game in London is probably way back in your memory. We haven't seen you since then. Right. Tight, Atlanta tight ends had some success against you. Yep. Pitts is kind of a unique guy. You know? Right. When you looked at that, what, what led to the problems against the tight ends in that game? Yeah, like we're not a, for the most part, we're not a match defense. You know, so you put guys in certain locations, you can get matchups at times that might be favorable in your way. So um, really for us, identifying where the matchups, the the undesirable matchups from our standpoint are, and then uh, making sure we lean that way or skate that way or or give help in that way. So uh, just be more mindful of the matchups. You know, I think that's something that we can improve on. Touching on that is... If that sack by Quincy is a penalty, what do you coach your guys to do? Um, that's a great question. Um, as I read the rule, I read it as though if the hands are put to the ground, that meant you were bracing your own weight. Um, there is a clear illustration, demonstration of him doing that. So, plus the shoulder, the helmet, everything was to the side initially. So, um, I, 
I need some clarification probably from the league too as far as what to teach in that circumstance because I get the rule and I understand the rule and I understand why the rule is in place. In fact, the player that I used to play uh, or a coach, Anthony Barr, you know, I think he's kind of like the one that put that into play, the fact that he hurt Aaron Rodgers with it and he's drove guys into the ground. <clears throat> it was something that we taught as a defense, you know, um, for years. Um, so I get that part of the rule, but I felt as though he made a – like a clear demonstration of trying to not land on him, brace himself with his own hands, keep his helmet out of contact. So I'm um, not quite sure. Do you, you think, know. Uh, do you think that should be reviewable, Jeff? Like, that would help because, I mean, the refs are making a split-second decision. On yeah, I, I just think that's a dicey game you play. Um, you know, obviously the, the fan is, is as important as anybody in this business, you know, and you slow the games down, you lengthen the games, and games get too cumbersome as far as all the different challenging. Uh, I think that can become gray, you know. The refs are part of the game, you know, and, and um, what they do well is part of the game, and, and their mistakes are part of the game. Like my mistakes are part of the game. Players' mistakes are part of the game. It's just part of the game. So, um, but it is unfortunate because I felt as though – now we have to overcome those things because they're going to happen and guys are going to make mistakes, whether it's rest, players, whatever, coaches. Uh, but I just felt like that was like a momentum turn within that game. You know, like that, that essentially it wasn't a three and out, but it was an early, good stop early in the game, you know, and it gets you momentum, it gets you confidence, it gets you, you know, a little success. So, yeah, it was unfortunate. Jeff, the, um, the – Again, going back to the Falcon game a little bit, there were the two touchdowns that Atlanta was able to get where you guys got caught with a defensive end in coverage. Right. Um, Robert was saying that that was something you've done multiple times throughout the year, yeah. just no one had caught you yet. The yeah, fact that the Falcons did, does that kind of indicate that maybe it was put on film so now reel it back in a little bit? It, it's hard. I mean, when you're on the one-and-a-half-yard line, I mean, you have to sell out on the run. Like, in my opinion, you force a team to throw the ball and score, you know, and – and that is absolutely not on the DN's fault there. That is on me. I called the, the defense, put them in a, a very unfavorable matchup. And um, unfortunately, in goal line defense, that's going to happen at times. You know, like for me to sell out on the run and for me to absolutely eliminate your run game, which we've done on the goal line, which I think when people score that touchdown, they forget about the seven stops we've had on the goal line prior to that. Um, it can happen. Now, there's ways that we can protect and there's ways that we can um, limit his exposure into that type of coverage, especially that, that player. You know, I could have done a better job in that way. Um, but at times in the goal line, you're going to get those matchups. If, uh, Belichick's record against rookie quarterbacks is pretty extraordinary. I just wonder, as a, as a guy on your side of the ball, do you, is there any element of, of I don't say licking your chops going against a rookie, but uh, is, is there anything you do you know, or is it, is it is it a little bit easier to go against you know a rookie quarterback? Um, I mean, I don't yeah, I mean, there, there's there's inexperience. You know, when there's inexperience, there's there's ways to utilize our defensive personnel, our disguise package, all those things to take advantage of that for sure. Um, uh, but saying that, like, I think that Josh McDaniel does an excellent job with him. Like, he doesn't ask this kid to do something he's not capable of doing. He makes the game. I think um, very favorable to a young quarterback. It seemed like he very much last on the last go round. It was a lot of short passing. Short passing, and screens, run game, didn't play, play pass. Bad spots. That's right. Not asking him to do as much drop back, but it goes back to the earlier question. I think that as he gets more confidence, as he gets more time on task, and he plays more, um, they'll open that playbook up for him, and they'll give him more of those opportunities. But I feel like early, they've definitely taken. Um, or they, they put him in um, – they haven't put him in situations that are, you know, that – that would just expose his youth as much. I don't know how to say that exactly. Yeah. But Jeff, a couple more. When you look at the zero interceptions, does that bother you? Does, does that, do you think that's a problem or is that nothing to you? <laughs> That's a hard question. Is it, is it, is it, yeah, it's is frustrating. It, is, it, is it not? Like, no, it's it's for sure frustrating because um, I, I feel as though like when we really went back and tore the tape apart, there was like we averaged about four opportunities a game where there was that we should have picked that ball off and we should have finished and we should have should have got it done. Um, you know, I think as we get more familiar with this defense and the guys just 
it goes from just doing my job to abs to actually applying the information that I've learned during the week regarding my opponent, and there comes that level of anticipation and and really understanding where to take my shots and the spots within the game to to make those plays. Um, I think that'll start to come. You know, I, I think we got two things right now. And this is not I'm not saying this as an excuse anyway, but we're younger and um, and the system is new, you know, so as these guys get more time on task for them and more experience, I think um, we'll see a, a natural uptake in that yeah, as far as the picks are concerned. It, it's a saying that predates you here, but we used to talk a lot about this team not getting sacks, and they said sacks come in bunches. Is it similar to that with interceptions? Like once one comes, a bunch of them come? Or is it a matter of, like you were saying, that like you can call things that are designed to kind of... I think sacks come in bunches because it's just you take care, you take advantage of poor offensive lines, you know. But and then you, just, you get them, and then you take advantage of poor quarterbacks, and the and the picks come, you know. But um, I believe that we have the guys that that can absolutely like intercept the ball, guys that can utilize the scheme and and make plays for themselves, apply the information they've they've gathered during the week. Um, so I anticipate that we will get our hands on some balls, and we need to get our hands on some balls. Last one for Kim. Jeff, um, with the offensive struggles early, when Mike LaFleur was in here earlier, he was talking about the small number of plays they're getting in the first quarter, and that obviously puts a lot of strain on your defense. What, I'm, pre I'm presuming that you've liked how your defense has responded in those moments, but what is it about this group that they are able to handle it? That, that's a, asking an awful lot of, obviously, your defense right. first quarter after first quarter. Yeah, I have been happy with the way they responded to the sudden changes. There was a two-game span there where we had quite a few of them, and um, we're so fortunate that we have a group of guys that those moments occur, and it's like this is a great opportunity for us. Let's take the field. Let's get the ball back for our offense. Let's give them another opportunity. Um, I've been around groups. I'm sure you guys have all been around groups of players and coaches that don't necessarily look at it that way, and, and it creates um, – the potential divide within a team, you know, but I have felt zero of that from this group. You know, they, they understand that we are absolutely in this together. There's going to be days where um, we win games for this organization. There's, there's going to be days where they're going to have to bail us out, you know, and um, I think that's the mark of a good team and, and probably more importantly of, of a good culture within a team. And I think that exists here.